Welcome, welcome, welcome to Fun with Math with your host, Mrs. Alexander. Ready to go. We are working on P65 and 66 in your more practice and homework books. And our lesson today was using those properties of addition. So let me show you this page that you hopefully have right in front of you. Here we go. Everything's working for me here. There it is. All right, let's adjust a little bit here. All right, oh, it's not looking as good. Maybe like that. Let's see if it stays. Okay, so the properties of addition, we talked today about the cumulative and the associative. Is that right? Cumulative doesn't sound right. Let me, let me look really quickly. Oh, commutative, not cumulative, commutative. There it is, commutative property and the associative property. So if you remember, the associative property means that we can rearrange our groups um, for order of operations and add after we rearrange those groups. And the commutative property means we can change the order of our addition and get those like denominators together first. So here we go. Ellen mixes one third of a cup of orange juice with five sixths of a cup of lemonade to make fruit punch. Then she adds one and two third cups of soda. Use the properties of addition to find how many cups of fruit punch she makes and show your work. So we have one third of a cup. We have five sixths of a cup that she's adding. And then she adds one and two thirds. And we're trying to find the answer for that expression. So when we look at those denominators, we have some thirds that really we would want together. So I'm going to, again, use that commutative property. And I'm going to keep the one third. I'm going to move the one and two thirds. And then we have the five sixths. And then I'm going to group. So I do those first right in the front. So now I have one and three thirds plus five sixths. Ooh, one and three thirds plus five sixths is what I've got. So one and three thirds is really two plus five sixths equals two and five sixths cups. Should be our final answer. I'm just gonna do a little wang doodle over here. Is that from? Who does a wang doodle? Graham, sir, from Charlie. Let's just make sure. All right. Oh, wrong page. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Oh, they've got a different page. Oh, no, they don't. Two and five, six. That's that. All right. We're good to go. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hang in there with me, guys. It's a uh, Tuesday after a snow day on a Monday feels like a Monday. Here we go. That's our final answer. And we did show our work. Susan works one and three fourths hours on math homework and one and one third hours on a science project. Then she spends three fourths of an hour writing a paper for history class. How many hours does Susan work on her homework assignments? Oh boy. She got a lot of homework. One and three fourths hours for math one and one third hours for science, and then three fourths of an hour in writing. I want to know how many hours she's spending on all that homework. One and three fourths plus one and one third plus three fourths. Again, when I look at that, I see that I've got two add ends that are fourths. So I'm going to rewrite. So one and three fourths plus three fourths plus one and one third. I'm gonna keep those together. I wanna to do those first. I have one and six fourths. That is improper. So what I can do right away, that's plus one and one third. What I can do right away though is rename that. So now I would have two and two fourths plus one and one third. This one's taking me more room. I should have started farther off here to the side. Now I need a common denominator, four and three. I'm going to make that into twelfths. So I have two and some twelfths plus one and some twelfths. Four times three is twelve. 
two times three is six. Three times four is 12. One times four is four. We now have whole numbers. Two plus one is three. Six twelves plus four twelves is 10 twelve. Three and 10 twelves can be our final answer. We could simplify that. It would be three and five sixths. If you did the simplifying, good job. You don't have to at this point. All right, let's practice a little bit. Here I have one and three eighths plus two and one fourth plus one and four eighths. I want to rearrange this. And actually, I think I'm going to get my notebook. If you have a notebook, just for a little bit more room. They don't give us a lot of space here. So in my notebook, here we go. I'm going to work on this first one. It is two fourths. I'm just going to rewrite it the way it looks here on my page. And this is number three. Two fourths plus one eighth. And that was grouped plus five eighths. All right. So because I know that I can move my add ends around and I can change this group, I'm going to rewrite this as two fourths plus, I want the one eighths and the five eighths together. So I'm going to do that. Then I can go ahead and start in this group. One eighth plus five eighths equals six eighths. I'm still adding the two fourths to that. This looks more familiar like what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to look and get a common denominator of eight. Four times two is eight, two times two is four. Two fourths is the same as four eighths plus six eighths equals 10 eighths. Because that's improper, I'm going to rename it. Eight goes into 10 one whole time with two eighths left. And again, you could leave it like that or if you're going to simplify, that would be one and one fourth. All right. Try to get that in some focus for you a little better. There's number three, one and two eighths, or one and one fourth would also be acceptable. There it is. All right, number four, here we go. It says three fifths plus one half plus four fifths. When I look at that, I want those fifths to be together. So I'm going to do, oh, this doesn't want to stay, I need to tighten it or something. <laughs> I'm going to rearrange my add-ins. I'm going to get those fifths together. And then I'm going to show that that's what I'm going to do first. So I have three fifths plus four fifths is seven fifths and I still have that one half. I'm gonna leave this as an improper fraction for right now. So I have one half plus seven fifths. The common denominator for those is going to be tenths. So I have some tenths plus some tenths. One half would equal five tenths. Seven fifths would equal 14 tenths. When I add those together, I get 19 tenths. And then I have to rename that. It's improper. So I'm going to rename that as one and nine tenths. And that should be our final answer there. Add it to my paper here, one and nine tenths. Number five, I have four ninths plus two thirds plus two ninths. All right, my properties tell me I can move my add ends and regroup them. I'm going to say two thirds plus four ninths plus two ninths. I want those ninths together. I'm going to add in my group first six ninths. I still have two thirds to add to that. Looking now for a common denominator, I'm going to use ninths. So six ninths is going to stay the same. Three ninths is going to become six ninths. Six ninths plus six ninths, not a room, equals 12 ninths, which is going to equal, I got a bad setup today, I'm sorry. There we go. 
Let's get them to work. Oh, somebody's calling me. I'm not going to answer them yet. All right, 12 ninths equals one and three ninths. All right, let me go back to my paper. Ignore the phone ringing. One and three ninths or one and one third if we're going to simplify. All right, sorry about this setup in the phone ringing. We're gonna muddle through, I can call them back. Let's do number six. Number six, I have one and three eighths plus, in a group I have two and one fourth plus one and four eighths. I'm gonna use those properties. I have one and three eighths plus, I'm gonna move this one and four eighths in a group with that and add the two and one fourth. There we go. Two and seven eighths plus two and one fourth equals, I'm gonna change this to eighths. So we have two and seven eighths plus two and eight eighths, which is going to equal four and nine eighths. Now that is an improper fraction. So I have four. I'm going to rename that nine eighths as one and one eighth and get an answer of five and one eighth there. Number six, five and one eighth. I went a little fast on that one. Should be picking up on this. If you need to pause at any time to catch up or to do the work, do that. All right. Here I go with number seven. Three and four sixths plus one and one half plus three and five sixths. No groups, I'm looking for those common denominators. So I've got the six there, which will make this easier for me. So I'm going to do three and four six plus three and five six. That will be my group plus one and one half. Now I can add here six and nine six plus one and one half. I could leave it just like that. I still need six. So I could do six and nine six, or I needed a common denominator, which would be sixes. And then one and one half would be one and three six. So I didn't have to adjust that first fraction because I renamed the second one to be equivalent and a denominator of six. Six plus one is seven. Nine six plus three six. 12 6, which would be 7 plus 12 6 is a whole 2, which is going to equal a whole 9 for number 7. And number 8, I have 2 and 7 tenths plus 3 and 2 fifths plus 1 and 1 tenth. Using my properties of addition, I'm going to swip swap these first two. I'm going to do three and two fifths plus two and oh, two and seven tenths, two and seven tenths plus one and one tenth. So I've now used the properties, the commutative and the associative properties here. I can do this in parentheses first would be three and eight tenths. I'm adding the three and two fifths. I'm going to leave this as tenths because five times two is 10. So 10 is a factor of five. I will have three and four tenths plus three and eight tenths will equal six and 12 tenths. Now that's improper. So I still have a whole six, but I'm renaming this 12 tenths and adding it to my six, the one and two tenths. I get seven and two tenths for number eight. Seven and two tenths, which if you are already simplifying would be seven and one fifth. Either answer is acceptable. All right. Let me do this last one since I've got some lines here. Math on the spot. On one afternoon, Mario walks from his school to the mall. Oh, there's the school to the mall. 
That evening, Mario walks from the mall to the library and then to his home. Describe how you can use the properties to find how far Mario walks. So he went school to mall, school to mall, I'm gonna say is two fifths of a mile. Two fifths. And then he walked from the mall to the library. I'm going to say that is one and one third. All right, he walks from his school to the mall. He walked mall to the library and then to home. So that was another four fifths of a mile. How can we use those properties of addition? Again, I can use the commutative property and I can move around my add ins two fifths plus four fifths plus one and one third. And then I can use that associative property. I want those first two to go together first. So then I would have six fifths plus one and one third. Now I need my common denominator. It's going to be 15. So I'll have 18 fifteenths plus one and five fifteenths. Now, what I could do is I could adjust this 18 fifteenths first. I know that's one and three fifteenths plus one and five fifteenths. So that would equal two and eight fifteenths miles. And that would be our answer for how far he walked. All right, good. I went a little quickly. Hopefully you were pausing or you were able to keep up because this is becoming more familiar to you. What is the value of this expression? I'm gonna use my space over here to do my work. I'm going to move things around like we've been doing right away. And then I would get 10 eighths plus three sixteenths. I have to adjust and get a common denominator. So I'm gonna do 20 sixteenths plus three sixteenths equals 23 sixteenths, which is going to equal one and seven sixteenths. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I'm sorry if I, feel, I'm kind of rushing, I feel like I don't mean to. Like I said, pause or take your time. Which is equivalent? So we do have to do this work. I see two and three fifths that I'm going to add to one and four fifths. And then I'm going to add that two and a half. So I would have three and seven fifths plus two and one half. I need a common denominator, three and 14 tenths plus two and five tenths. I went with the 10 equals five and 19 tenths, which would be six and nine tenths. And here is six and nine tenths. Okay. Which one is equivalent here? I'm gonna do five twelfths. I'm gonna move that 11 twelfths with it. And then I'll still have another one fourth. That will equal 17 twelfths plus one fourth. Common denominator, I can use twelfths. And I'm going to get 20 twelfths, which would be one and eight twelfths. We don't see that over here. So maybe I need to simplify equals one and two thirds. Oh, I don't have that one either. Let's check my work. Five twelfths plus 11 twelfths. Oh, there it is. Who caught that? I'm glad it was multiple choice because I saw that my answer wasn't there. This should be 16 twelfths. I definitely need to slow down, don't I? Sorry, the 16 twelfths, that left me with 19 twelfths, which left me with one and seven twelfths. Oh, thank goodness for multiple choice. My answer wasn't here. I got to go back and check. Zeke buys three and five eighths pounds of bananas, two and one fourth pounds of pears and two and seven eighths pounds of strawberries. 
how many pounds of fruit is he buying? Three and five eighths plus two and one fourth plus two and seven eighths equals. Here we go. I want two and one fourth by itself. So I can add three and five eighths and two and seven eighths. When I do that, I get two and one fourth plus five and 12 eighths. Common denominator, four and eight. I'm going to have two and two eighths plus five and 12 eighths equaling seven and 14 eighths. Because that's improper, seven plus eight goes into 14 one time with six left over. So we should get a final answer here of eight and six eighths. Now, if you are simplifying, you may have gotten eight and three fourths, and that would be acceptable. Here, the values that have six, I'm gonna ask you, we're running a little bit long. I'm gonna ask you to pause if you haven't already, go through each of these, select your answers, all of the expressions that have a value of six and come back and check with me. I'm gonna just post the answers when you come back. Your answers for number 14 should be B, C, and E. All right, if you have any questions about that part, we can go over it in class. Spiral review, write an expression to model four times as much as the difference of 74 and 13. So four times as much, because it says the difference, that tells me I have to make a group. Difference says subtract. I have to find that difference and then four times as much. So that's what it should look like for that expression. The sum or difference, one fourth plus five twelfths. I'm adjusting to make twelfths. We'll get eight twelfths, or again, if you're simplifying, it would be two thirds, three fourths minus one sixth. I'm again going to use twelfths. So I have nine twelfths minus two twelfths, which would give me seven twelfths. All right, gang. Whew. Thanks for hanging in there. If you had to pause or slow down a little bit, that is perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to ask that you bring any questions you have about this to class. We're going to be reviewing this in our next class meeting and hopefully getting stronger so we can master this skill. All right, I will see you in class. Bye.